Hello there, this is my clip number one, which pertains to in your textbook, this business uh, sixth Canadian edition, um, basically uh, parts of chapter 5, 18, and 19. So instead of sort of having them all split apart, what I'm going to kind of do is put it all together for you. Effectively what I want to cover is basically two graphs from uh, another textbook, it's Lipsy Regan Coran book. Um, it's in their chapter 37. And um, just two pictures, very simple, two lines, you know, it's very simple pictures, but basically brings together all these concepts. I think in a very, you know, very neat, succinct um, way. So um, because I, I, I value sort of the idea of, a, of an efficient way of explaining concepts and also showing how that all these things in your textbook are actually all sort of interrelated um, as opposed to being all separated as they did and sort of putting it all together for you. I think it's valuable. So I, well, that's what I'm going to do. So from the um, Lipsy Reagan Quran book, I'm going to show you figure um, 37.1 and 37.2 which I've scanned and reproduced for you. Uh, which and then I'm going to discuss it all. And basically, um, what this, these two graphs sort of subsume, what they can you know, cover, is basically chapter 5 in your textbook, pages 145 to 146, pertaining to trade balance, okay, which is part of the current account. As I've explained in my previous video about the balance of payments. You really should watch the balance of payments video before attempting to watch this one or you will be lost. <laughs> okay, no question about that. Um, and, how, and in particular how I define current account, capital account, and official financing account. Um, apparent, yes, I, I should maybe I didn't really want to mention this, but there is, they did ch actually change some of the classifications a few years ago. I'm still using the older system, so if you were to go look this up, let's say at um, the Statistics Canada or the United States, it's um, the Commerce Department. They have a slightly different classification system um, when it pertains to what they put into the current account, what they put into the capital account. So. So that's why you sort of have to follow my definitions, which apparently seem to be the older system. Okay. Um, also, it, it captures the balance of payments discussion in chapter five in your textbook on pages 146 to 147. It also covers pages 148 and 149 of your textbook in chapter five on exchange rates, exchange rate determination, um, this whole fixed versus floating exchange rates. Chapter 5, pages 151, in sort of starting that, that page, which begins a discussion of exports and imports. Also, page 154, which talks about foreign direct investment. Right? Again, export, import, what pertains to the current account, okay, the trade balance part of the current account to be exact. Um, and the foreign direct investment, based on how my other book classified all of this as part of the capital account, right? It would pertain to um, capital inflows and capital outflows, basically buying assets. It also captures chapter 18 of your textbook, pages 603 to 605 on the Bank of Canada, because eventually I want to show how the Bank of Canada also can play an important role in fixing exchange rates through uh, basically uh, adding to or selling off parts of its official um, reserve. Okay, and page 609 of your textbook of chapter 18 which talks about government influences on exchange rates. See? And also chapter 19 pretty much is also to some extent related to this discussion as well because chapter 19 talks about the securities markets, talks about stocks and bonds um, which again, under my classification system, I guess the old system, as it's called now, this would be all. This whole chapter 19 is really nothing more than, uh, or it relates to the balance of payments 
in the capital account because it pertains to portfo portfolio investments, right? You're buying stocks and bonds, which of course can bonds, of course, can be government bonds, um, as well as uh, corporate bonds, so issued by companies. And this, of course, as a as a complete aside, also plays into issues of government debt and deficit. So the fiscal policy stuff, which your textbook talks about as well, because governments, you know, Canadian government could, for instance, um, issue bonds which could be bought by foreigners, right? So we have foreign transactions pertaining to, you know, fiscal policy. So it all kind of, it isn't all broken apart, sort of like your textbook does. It, it, they, all these things all kind of intertwine, because it's all a big system. It's an economic system. Okay, so that's why I, I did this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, uh, at the end of this clip, I'm going to show you uh, figure 37.1. And then I'm going to um, go on and uh, talk about what it means and how it captures all of these concepts. And then what figure 37.1 is basically showing you is a simplified um, uh, two-country example of the foreign exchange market. And then what figure 13.7, uh, thir I'm sorry, not 13, 30, it's 37.2 will show you, kind of rhymes there, is... Um, the um, how a um, fixed versus floating exchange rates regime works and basically how a central bank kind of manipulates all of this. Um, well, basically, I, mean, I shouldn't say manipulate. It's more of an intervention is what it is. They're sort of intervening in the market. Um, it's just it's just because what, what I mean by manipulation is, is there there are taking the market exchange the exchange rate that exists that you see is not the one that would have existed under sort of a, a, a laissez-faire hands-off approach when the central bank doesn't intervene at all is what it means right so there's sort of what the exchange rate that would have existed with no central bank intervention versus what what does exist with central bank intervention Okay, so now I'm going to show you the chart at the end of this clip here, and I'll come back and, and discuss it in more detail.